In this video, we're going to talk about constitutional isomers. This nice diagram in your book shows the difference between constitutional isomers and stereoisomers. Molecules are considered to be isomers if they have the same molecular formula, but are somehow different. If we look at those isomers and they have different connectivity, then they are classified as constitutional isomers. If they have the same connectivity, then we would classify these as stereoisomers. We'll talk more about stereoisomers in Chapter 5. For right now, we're going to focus on constitutional isomers. Let's start with a simple example of a constitutional isomer. Here's heptane. Heptane has a molecular formula of C7H16. Isomers of heptane would have this same molecular formula, but different connectivity. Here are some examples. All of these examples here have the same molecular formula, C7H16, but you can clearly see that they have different connectivity. A good way to check for different connectivity is to name the molecules. If the molecule has a different name, but the same molecular formula, it's a constitutional isomer. If I just redraw heptane, it looks a little bit different, but this is still just heptane. If I were to go through and name this molecule, I would quickly realize that it's the same thing. It's heptane. It's not a constitutional isomer. Let's look at some examples of constitutional isomers in biomolecules. For example, leucine, an amino acid, is a constitutional isomer of isoleucine. They have the same molecular formula, and essentially the only difference is this methyl group is moved over here. There are also some great examples of constitutional isomers in sugars. For example, ribose, shown here on the left in its open chain form, can cyclize. These molecules have the same number of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, so they are constitutional isomers. Glucose, shown over here, can also cyclize. Again, these have the same numbers of carbons, oxygens, and hydrogens, and because they have different connectivity, they are considered to be constitutional isomers. In this slide, we see some examples of monosaccharide isomers. All of these are in their open chain form, and you can see that they have different connectivity. Ribose here on the left has a molecular formula of C5, H10, O5. Ribose over here on the right has the same molecular formula, but different connectivity. You can see over here on the left we have an aldehyde, and on the right we have a ketone. Thus, when we classify these different types of monosaccharides, we actually use a different way to describe them. They're both pentoses because they have five carbons, one, two, three, four, five, and pentose implies a sugar with five carbons. However, ribose is an aldopentose because it has an aldehyde, and ribulose is a ketopentose because it has a ketone. Glucose and fructose on the bottom here are also constitutional isomers, and we can tell that by their classification. Glucose is an aldohexose, one, two, three, four, five, six. Fructose is also a hexose, one, two, three, four, five, six. But glucose is an aldohexose, meaning that it has an aldehyde, and fructose is a ketohexose, meaning that it has a ketone. Glucose and fructose have the same molecular formula. However, because their connectivity is different, they are considered to be constitutional isomers. In the next video, we're going to look at degrees of unsaturation and how we can apply degrees of unsaturation to quickly identify constitutional isomers.